a lot is changing in the real estate world right in front of us. I mean, we have lower mortgage rates. Inventory levels are still low, but we have more options than ever before. And there may be more competition on the horizon. So join me as I dive into the latest real estate trends for September to see which markets you can be looking at. But honestly, you really want to figure out how to position yourself in today's market to be successful. And if you want to know if now is a good time to buy a house, honestly, I, I don't have the answer for you. The best time to purchase a house is when you are financially ready. But let's go ahead and look at the market as a whole. And first, let's talk about the average house price which in the US you're looking at 500,000 and that's the average. But if we go ahead and take a look at the median, you'll be looking at about 412,000. Big difference there. So definitely look into your local market to get more accurate numbers. In fact, let's look more closely into the prices so you can see how that area you're looking at is performing. Yeah, we're gonna go over a few different sources to really get all the information to be able to dial it in. And hopefully you can use it to for your own personal gain. And so let's go ahead and take a look at this. So this chart here is referring to, as you can see, it's referring to 4.3% from July of 2024 and July of 2023. So that is what this is referring to. So that's how much prices have increased since then. Now, if we look at the month over month, and this is all referring to the current, you can see here, you can see that it states homes prices decreased between July 2024 and June. So you can use that, but this is what they're forecasting moving forward. So if we look, they're forecasting for the month to rise between July and August, which I mean, you guys can go ahead and take a look because all this data is pretty much old. And that's the one thing about real estate. You know, everything, ha really, everything is slow in terms of data. And in fact, you really have every quarter, that's when, in my opinion, that's when everything really gets updated. But for those that are looking to purchase, this is the number I think you could really focus in on a little bit more, which is the forecast. And that's the year over year. Because if we take a look here, you can see that they're anticipating it to increase 2.2 between July of 2024 and July of 2025. So whoever's in the market right now, just know prices aren't really coming down um, as much as you know I'm sure many people would like. Um, but you can see here price as I just kind of just mentioned you know price growth is still there it's just not as significant as I think a lot of people have experienced in the past couple of years so here we can take a look at home prices throughout the entire US so I'll lower myself here a bit so we can really understand what's going on and this is as of July 2024 right again like I mentioned real estate data takes some time to really gather all the pieces together and that's part of the reason of it is because how long it takes to actually close on a home you know the average home is closing in 30 to 45 days so you know you're not going to have that data literally the month after or two months after it does take some time to get all that information make sure it's accurate but if we go ahead and take a look you guys can really take a look here to see which markets are not really increasing in terms of price here over here so i'm not going to go ahead and try to name every single one the most that i'm more concerned about is this boy over here in north carolina uh, because that does impact everything that i have to offer to individuals who are looking to either buy or sell or invest in this area and so if i go ahead and move down a bit more you can see which areas really increase either the most or the least um, because it's really not defined on which ones increase the most or not it's really defined this is really identifying which areas have which metro areas which large areas that most people are relocating to and unfortunately they don't have North Carolina here so I'm not able to know exactly what that means but for all you individuals that want to move to any of these places again prices aren't really slowing down unfortunately unfortunately for those individuals who <laughs> want to buy but i guess fortunate for the people who have or already own and so let's just say you don't want to make a bad investment you want to make sure you're protected you don't want to be on the other end where you purchase a home and then voila you start to lose equity your home value goes down and now you're underwater so here are some markets to maybe stay clear of or maybe be patient with them a little bit because 
I mean, they're stating that there's a very high price. I mean, uh, the risk level of price declining is, I mean, as you can see, is stating very high. And the only reason why I would assume this is simply because prices in these areas have risen way too quickly, way too fast for their own good. <laughs> but this isn't the only, that's all that I really want to share with you guys here. I mean, this isn't the only piece of information I want to be able to share with you guys. So for those who are homeowners watching this right now, and you really want to know, okay, well, how is your home equity doing? Well, as you guys can see, based off of what I just showed you with the prices, it's been increasing year over year. So you're pretty good. You're pretty solid. Again, this is of quarter t of Q2. So let's just say the past, let's say six months or so. This is what the numbers were, were looking like. And so how many people have negative equity nationally? Okay, no, so that decline, less homes, that's good. And so I just really wanted to show you really the first piece, um, the negative equity aspect. I don't know if this is gonna be really relevant to a lot of people watching this, so I won't really touch upon this, but for those who are curious and maybe those who are watching who are investors, and you want to know like all right well where are people underwater here they are as you can see it's not majority of the country i will tell you it's just a few select areas and it looks like a lot of the midwest is like that and yeah i'm not gonna continue to go through this one because we already know equity has risen i'm just now looking at it for my own sake to get a better understanding of what's really going on in this world today that we live in but if you really want to take another look i know we talked about prices i know we talked about home equity here's another indication that i use to help me identify what's really going on in the world today and here we can have it so year over year home prices have risen 6.5 percent which is kind of off from what we saw on the core logic one and if we go ahead and take a look at the Okay, Schiller again, but this is referring to month over month. We could see it says 0. 0.6. So again, this is the tricky part, right? When looking at all this information, <laughs> you're gonna have conflicting information. So it's best to gather as much information as possible to see which one makes sense towards what it is that you're trying to do. Not even which one makes sense, but which one is more in alignment of what you're trying to do. So. Hopefully that clears up a little bit in terms of what's going on with the prices. Just know, I mean, if I were to sum it all up, prices aren't really slowing down at this current moment. So let's go ahead and take a look at the new listings. And so what new listings is really talking about is how many homes are currently on the market. And so we don't really care about data from 2021 or 2022. We just really want to take a look at the past previous year. So you guys can really take a look. And this is again, looking at all metros. Well, yeah, all metros. So all of these areas, if you really want to get specific, I mean, you are free to go to this website and dial it in. If you can't find it, just ask me in the comments, reach out to me, do whatever you got to do. Um, to make sure that you can get this information. But if we can see, because 2024 is that yellowish color. Um, new listings actually is more than what it is previous, there's previous year. So that's really good for buyers, but not so much good for sellers because obviously as a seller, you get more competition, it's harder to sell, yada, yada, yada. As a buyer, this is good because now you have more options. So that's really good information that I can definitely share with you guys. and. I'm curious to know. Okay, so it's telling you as of September 8th, new listings. That's good. Okay, so it's, as you guys can see, it's it's rising. I'm not gonna really try to go deep into the numbers and try to make it make sense, but new inventory, there's more inventory on the market essentially. And if you wanna look on a national level, you can see here, so here's where we went through the big old shebang when we all were inside. <laughs> uh, so yes, you can see inventory kind of took a plummet because this is when everybody was really buying. I mean, and builders weren't building as quick enough. So that's going to be a whole nother shebang. Builders not building fast enough to make this inventory level go up. And then of course you have people who don't want to sell for whatever reason. 
But you guys can see, this is still below those those times where we spent inside, which is progression, right? Progression, but it's I, I don't think it's we're not in a balanced market, which I believe we need about six months or so, um, which we're not even close to it. <laughs> we weren't close to it during this time. So, anywho, let's go ahead and look at pending sales. So this is going to give you an indication as far as how many people are actually purchasing these homes, right? How many are buying, you know, still in the market. And this number is actually lower than last year. So which means, you know, not as many people are buying, but of course I think it's it's so close, you might as well just call it the same. Here, maybe I can share with you guys 2021, 2022, so that you guys can see <laughs> how many more people were buying in 2022 and 2021 in comparison to where we're at right now. A lot less people on the market for several different reasons. You know, some people just got priced out. Um, some people are just, you know, maybe just don't want to touch the prices or don't like the interest rates. I mean, there's so many different reasons as, as to why someone may not purchase. So there's still a lot of competition out there in the world. Is it as much as it was in 2021, 2022? No, but of course they are still there and present. So keep that in mind when you are doing your search. So now I want to be able to show you, I showed you the inventory. So I'll share with you the month, month of supply. Okay, you're gonna give it to me a week. So you're gonna make me do a little bit of math here and that's perfectly fine. So if we're sitting at about 15 weeks, four, eight, 12, so we're about four months of inventory, which I said the balance number is about six. So we have some ways to go before we really get there. And six, and honestly, this number should be more like that 20. Let's see if I could. Should be more at like the 24, that 24 level for it to be more of a balanced market. But we're not there yet. And okay, pretty cool. I mean, if this, if any of this is not making any sense to anybody, please <laughs> let me know. Uh, reach out to me. And I'm more than happy to maybe break it down and maybe even we could set up a, t a time and date where we can speak in detail and maybe even look specifically at that market that you're looking at to getting into to see if it's if it makes sense for you and just kind of what's going on. I am not uh, entirely an economics guy. I know economics. I'm not going to foretell anybody the future because I don't have a fortune teller. But if you do, please let me know and share that information with me because then that could help a lot of people in this world. So. I want to be able to share with you guys as well this last piece how many how long are those homes on the market for so what i mean by that is if a home gets listed how quickly is it for that seller to actually get it sold and so you can see it's actually taking longer than it was last year to get homes sold because there's just less buyers i mean you guys were able to see the pending sales you could see that there's less buyers in the market so it's of course going to take a little bit more time to sell anything. I mean, if we look at 2022, 2021, we could really see where that was. All right, you could really tell in 2022, homes weren't really sitting on the market. Oh, well, we can actually look towards this time. All right, so it still was less than where we're at right now. So like I said, you have more options as a buyer. Not only do you have more options, but homes are staying on the market, so you can take time, you can take your time with making your decision. It's not as much competition because it's not many, that, that many sales going on the contract. So you can take all this information and apply it to what it is that you're doing on your day to day. In fact, if you're a current homeowner and you're curious to know what the value of your home is, just send me an email and I'll get back to you in about 48 hours with that report so you can be able to tell what's going on. Now, if you want to have a further conversation, further in depth, then please, you know, just let me know and we can go through it together. I promise you guys, this is not something that is going to go out to the masses. You're not going to get a ton of phone calls, emails or anything. This is coming straight to me so that I can be able to filter out and help you guys understand what's really going on with it. maybe you're looking to purchase or or better yet, maybe you're actually curious about what is your choices, what's your opportunity, what's your options in terms of selling. But as I mentioned, you know, there's a lot going on in this world. And one of the things I mentioned really 
early in this conversation was <laughs> lower mortgage rates. So if you guys do not know, this is the time where you really want to pay attention. In fact, copy this URL, look at it, screenshot it, copy, do whatever you got to do to really understand, you know, how are you, how can you position yourself in this market? Because right now, I mean, we're talking interest rates are coming down a bit, right? And that's a good sign for those individuals who want to be in the market. Let me see if I can actually pull it all the way up so you guys could really see how it all comes together. And so uh, I really wish it was able to show because I'm able to get the chart just to show these two. But if we go ahead and look at everything, so let's just look at where we're at today at, of this recording, which I'm not recording on Monday the 16th, but as you guys can see, you're looking at about a 6.12. Now this is not factoring anything of your personal information. So take this with a grain of salt, but this is kind of where everything is at. If you're looking for a 30 year fix. Now, if you're looking for a 15, you're looking at a 5.63. And this website here is going to update you every single day in regards to where that mortgage where those mortgage rates are ideally not this is does not mean this is what you're going to get please understand that this is just ideally where the market is you still have to consider and take into account your own personal credit scores your income all that sorts to make sure that you can get a more of an accurate information and number as far as what so if you're curious to know about that you know reach out to your local lender and see if you can maybe get them to give you something uh, but if we were to look, and the reason why I'm sharing this is, I don't know if you guys could really see it. Maybe I, there we go. I showed this a while ago. <laughs> if I zoom in, you guys could really see how really here, this was the peak in April. And ever since then, it's starting to come down a bit more. And, you know, there's a lot of talks in the conversations that, you know, we'll see them come down even more, but we shall really see. I honestly don't believe anybody to actually see it. So... Yeah, that's just how I stand with it. But one thing I would definitely share as well is, you know, just as I'm getting to the, one of the most important pieces, which is, you know, identifying, you know, where is it that you can even look? You know what this really means for everybody that's sitting on the sidelines right now? It just means as this comes down more, it may be great for you, but it also means that there's going to be potentially more competition in the world that's waiting for this to come down some. So if there's more competition, maybe bidding wars are back maybe not as crazy but maybe you do have you know two three offers that come in right behind you trying to capture or acquire the same property you're trying to get but let's just say you know price is something that you're concerned about and you really want to take a look to see where is it that you can position yourself so here are seven this is an article i found and i was like okay this is pretty good to share with you guys so that you guys can identify where exactly should you or could you even be looking and so here are some of the cheapest housing markets with the lower property tax as you guys know a lot of people you know i don't know if you guys know but a lot of people got jammed um <laughs> because property taxes are getting reassessed and whatnot nowadays so a lot of people are getting sticker shock with their new tax bill <laughs> which increases their mortgage payment but hey this is part of the ownership home ownership that we got to live through right but here are some of the the states again that are with the the lowest property taxes and the cheapest so if you're concerned with price you're trying to figure out where to go here you got alabama you got louisiana wyoming kentucky nevada arkansas and utah oh wow I'm very shocked at Utah is knowing that a lot of people have been moving to Utah lately. And so that's actually pretty good information um, because, you know, that that's definitely not something that I was expecting Utah to be on that list. And, um, you know, it's unfortunate that North Carolina isn't there, so I can't pitch that to anybody. <laughs> But here's another thing too, I, I typically use this uh, for myself um, if I'm trying to make a good decision financially um, or maybe if somebody's like really conflicted between, you know, somewhere that they should relocate to. Okay, come on. Let's just do Stanford for 
If you guys don't know, I'm from Connecticut, not Stanford specifically. But this is something cool to use. You can enter your salary as well because then you can identify, all right, am I actually moving to an area where I'm gonna save or am I gonna spend more money? So this just really, right out the gate, it tells you, you know, <laughs> that this is not shocking anyways. The, the, the amount of chaos Connecticut, especially the area closer to New York, it is experiencing, it's, it's insane. Um, I still have ties and people there, so I hear these stories religiously, let's just say, but this is a website you guys can also use to make sure that, you know, you are making those decisions and helping you identify, you know, where is it that you should relocate to, if that's where you're at with it. But there goes the latest real estate trends for you. Hopefully it all made sense, but if it didn't, let's just sum it up real quickly for you. Prices are still rising, mortgage rates are coming down, and mortgage rates coming down may mean more competition in the market for you. So take that information and be able to apply it to your situation and your plan moving forward. And of course, if you want to have a deeper analysis of what's going on within the specific local market that you're looking at, feel free to reach out to me. Let me know what market you're looking at and let's have that dialogue to maybe even create a plan so that you can be a success within that to within today's market, honestly, whether you're looking to buy or sell, because just as much as I enjoy making these videos for you guys, my name is Ronnie and I am a licensed realtor in North Carolina and would love nothing more but the ability and opportunity to assist you with any of your real estate needs. So you see that number that is popping up right there. Make sure to give me a call, shoot me a text, email, day or night. Heck, maybe even on the weekends. Always remember one thing, I got your back in this market.